think we're stoked. This is our very first episode of Suck, Squeeze, Bang, Blow, which is the show all about engines. And the first thing we're going to do is a quick dyno test to look at a theory that I've written about quite a bit in the past. And that is the comparison of the single plane intake manifold versus the dual plane intake manifold. More specifically, the Victor Junior Edelbrock small block Chevy intake versus the Performer RPM air gap. Now, in the old days, I used to use these single plane Victors all the time. Pretty much it was just the standard. I remember writing about those and Vic Edelbrock actually calling me on the phone and saying, will you stop telling people to put those on street cars? You're just making problems for us because everybody's <laughs> junk is bogging off the line that doesn't work quite right. But then a few years later, they came out with this dual plane air gap design. And I've really been a fan of these things. I think this is the manifold to use for any street engine under 6,500 RPM, which is a pretty broad statement, but that's what we're going to test today to see is the Victor Junior better or is the air gap better? And then the thing that I want to do after that is a test I haven't done in ages, which is the RPM air gap versus the regular Edelbrock Performer RPM. Our victim for this test is just a super basic small block Chevy. It's uh, 360 cubic inches, which is a 60 over small block. It's got a stock crank, it's got stock block. Probe six inch rods, probe forged pistons with a little tiny 3cc dome in them, so it's 11 and a quarter one compression. The camshaft is a Comp Cams 294S, which is 248 at 50, five and a quarter lift on a 110 degree lobe separation angle. And we're running the old Dart 215 aluminum heads. These are not the new platinum heads, they're just the slightly older series. We do have one and a half to one roller rockers, one and five eighths inch hooker headers, and a plain old base model 750 double pumper Holly. First one on the pump, Victor Jr. All right, we got that little 350 running, and the first thing we did is get it just being consistent. Steve Brule tuned it up for us. We got a bunch of repeatable dyno runs. We took three of them in a row and averaged them together just to remove anomalies. And ultimately we ended up with 467 horsepower at 6,300 RPM and it made 431 pound-feet of torque at 5,000. Now we're going to run out and put the Performer RPM on the thing. He meant to say air gap. I'm hoping that we're going to see a little bit less peak power but more mid-range. here is average power curves taking two poles with each intake manifold and plotting them out. And what you'll see here is this curve right here is the horsepower and torque for the Victor Junior single plane intake manifold and this one here is for the Performer RPM air gap dual plane intake manifold. Look at all that more meat you're getting in the power curve with the dual plane. For this particular engine there's no way you'd choose the Victor. The RPM air gap is winning but what we're going to go find out is if we can take the regular Performer RPM and make it run as good as the air gap. Let's look here at the two regular Performer RPMs, which are taller versions of the Edelbrock Performer intake. They have more plenum volume. They should be more high performance and work in a higher RPM range than the standard Performer intake. The Q-Jet version has a little bit more area right here and a slightly larger plenum volume than over here on the regular square bore style Performer RPM. Now this particular intake manifold right here has been port matched a little bit, so it's going to invalidate our test. We're not going to run it. What we are going to do is run the Performer RPM Q-Jet with an adapter plate to use a regular Holley 4150 style carburetor. RPM Q-Jet. Play. What's going on is as soon as we change to the regular Performer RPM, the carburetor was having difficulty metering right at 2500 RPM at wide open throttle right when we start the dyno test. 
and we can't exactly figure out why. It's uh, not really intuitive why that would happen because it didn't do it with the RPM air gap. So we're a bit conflicted about whether our problem with it not metering at 2500 at wide open is because it has so much airspeed that it's pulling a lot of fuel and it's just going fat and misfiring, or if it's because the airspeed is so slow that the fuel is just dripping and not atomizing. With this open spacer on here, in theory, if the airspeed is too slow, this will make it worse, right? Yeah. So let's see. Oh, okay, pretty much that was way better, and it just laid down a number almost exactly what we saw with the RPM air gap. See, right here what we were seeing is super fatness that was just killing the curve, but with the one inch open spacer, it took care of it and gave us a little bit more top end. All right, the plot thickens. Us being the clever little gearheads that we are, had a look at the RPM air gap intake manifold and noticed that they have split the divider wall in the plenum here at Edelbrock. That's a factory piece. So we're going to go chuck this sucker into the lathe and we're going to knock the plenum wall out of this one to see if it solves the bottom end power and makes as much top end without having to use the one inch spacer. Yep. Look at that. Right here we fixed the problem that we had at the bottom end. This is the stock intake and this is the one with the plenum divider milled out a little bit. And we matched the power up top. But if you now lay over the air gap on top of it, you can see that this is nearly as good. The air gap is, is that much better right there. You're trying to build you look the at ultimate, it. looks like a stalker yeah. combo where nobody's gonna know you've modified anything, the original Performer RPM with our milled down plenum space divider is yep. the way to go. Yep, and put the factory fill tube in the front, painted yep. orange, put 283 valve covers on it, and uh, we'll be heroes. So this, uh, do you wanna put a one inch spacer on this thing and just see what it'll do? Okay, one inch open spacer going in on our final pull to see if we can make just a little more power. That was a good torque number. <laughs> Air gap average versus us with the spacer. But the thing you gotta say in the test we're not gonna get to is that the air gap with a one inch spacer will outrun this. True. I know it, I've done it too many times. And so is Steve. Right. Steve, tell me I'm right. You're right, Dave. I'm right, <laughs> Steve, Steve says I'm right. I know, no, I know you're right. <laughs> and, it, and it's not that, the, that running it this way with the Performer RPM is, you know, just better it's just that if you're trying to pull that stealth look, thing yeah. yeah look off you can't okay this was pretty good the first thing that we learned today is this little 350 chevy even with 11 to 1 compression and a 248 at 50 solid cam it really liked the performer rpm air gap dual plane intake better than the victor junior single plane the other thing we found out is that when you put a standard performer rpm on this thing with the solid plenum divider in that it will not pull down to 2,500 with this big giant cam. But what we really wanted to do is take this Performer RPM and modify it to look stock. So we had to make it make more power. We looked at the air gap and we saw that the plenum wall was cut out on it. So we modified this one, totally cleaned up our bottom end problem with it, but didn't quite have the top end power we were looking for. So then we added a one inch Wilson, Wilson aluminum spacer which brought our power almost to the same level as that air gap intake. I wish we'd gotten to the very last thing, which would have been to put the one inch spacer on top of the air gap, which would have made the most power overall. But we found the results we were looking for with our more stock looking intake manifold.